My name is Douglas Ryrie from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I'm here to go over some information about the intubation shield that we introduced previously. There's been a significant response for people asking questions about what the dimensions are and where to get it, and I'm here to provide that information now. Once again, at the intubation shield, using a tent to try and protect providers in the face of manipulation of the airway either in, during intubation or extubation. The easiest way to get the shield is through TRIPNT, T-R-I-P-P-N-T dot com. You can go to their website or you can call them. This is a personal protective shield or a biohazard shield. It's a medium sized shield. They make one a little larger and they make one a little smaller. This is part number 50707. It costs $57 as of uh, last time I checked. It can easily be ordered. And if you are interested in making it on your own, I can give you the dimensions. This is the base is 10 inches. The width across is 12 inches. The beginning rise is six inches and then the angle piece is 15 inches. These dimensions change at different sizes and then the angle is at 35 degree angle to the perpendicular of the surface that you're working on. One thing to remember, this is a continuous piece that's molded to this form. If you try and manufacture this, elsewhere and you try and create these you can use a little bit less angle you can make this a little bit higher but one might consider putting a reinforcement piece of plastic here because if this is a seam with glue or epoxy it, it's going to be more likely to crack whereas this is one there's no seam here this is one continuous piece uh, i want to point out that any high level decontaminant wipe can be used to clean or decontaminate the shield after use. This includes the cavity wipes or the sandy cloths. It also includes bleach, which will not hurt the acrylic. If you wipe them down often, what will happen is you'll get a slight film that will change the visual acuity through the glass slightly. And all one has to do to rejuvenate the clarity of the acrylic is to wipe it down with an alcohol wipe after the high level disinfection, and then the acrylic becomes perfectly clear again. The other thing that happens in using adhesive along the sides, over time, a small buildup of adhesive can occur. If that happens, one can use a small amount of adhesive remover, which also will not hurt the acrylic. Put it on some two by twos, make sure all the adhesive is off so no contaminants can stick to it. And then once again, at the end of getting all the adhesive off, if you just wipe off the residue left from the adhesive remover, it becomes clear and the shield is ready for use again. We previously demonstrated using the shield with the bag, any kind of transparent garbage bag. We can also use standard surgical drapes for creating the tent. In this case, these are uh, surgical drapes from 3M, which are reference number 1012. In order to create the drape, when these are sticky, we would open them up and create the drape using two of the sticky drapes and putting them together running up the shield instead of using a plastic bag. And this way we don't have to use tape. So we run it up the side. Now, once again, you can see that it just seals right onto the shield. Since this one comes up and forms the one side and then across the top, this last one is going to come down the bottom to create the last side. So you can easily see through the shield once again, and we have a tent. And, and instead of having a garbage bag, we now have the shield 
with the clear plastic drape going all the way down, and we can actually even stick the drape down to the patient, although that impedes us from getting to the patient. One of the other adaptations that we've made is the tent stays pretty well up, up on its own, but occasionally will tend to collapse on, on the patient. If you have an assistant holding it, it helps. We have a little double clip here, and we can clip it here, and then clip the plastic up. And what that does is hold the tent above the patient's face, particularly for extubation, and then it's not gonna fall in and around them so that the patient doesn't all of a sudden have plastic around their face. At the same time, this is very flexible and malleable and can easily be moved, so it doesn't impede an assistant either grabbing something or working through the plastic and not having to go under the plastic shield. One of the things that we've encountered from talking to other people is in trying to create more of a tent with more supports, what you do is you end up preventing the ability to work through the plastic on top of the plastic and move the plastic around to get to the patient to do things that you might need to do such as help them suction or reposition their oxygen or things of that nature. Thanks again for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Stay safe.